If you're not working to remember, you are bound to forget. One of the reasons that God allows certain things in your life to happen is to create never forget moments between you and Him that will become foundational in your life and memorial stones to the next generation. But when you begin to remember the Lord, you are very quickly reminded that He is God and you are not, that He's been the one leading and you haven't, that He has protected you and guided you and is doing all of those things and you aren't. But it's so easy to forget the Lord, isn't it? You wanna live a life free from worry? Remember the Lord. You want anxiety to stop dominating your life, your mind, and your day? Remember the Lord. You want to begin to take back some ground in your life on fear? Remember the Lord. Well, good morning, good morning. I hope you're doing well. It is good to be here. Like I said, my name is Isaac, one of our pastors, and I've been gone for a couple weeks and uh, excited to be here and get to share the word with you today. A couple things have happened uh, over the past couple weeks since we've been together. Uh, one, I uh, cut the tip of my pinky off and had to have it glued back on. And I had a son. So those are the two things. So um, yeah, so it's been an eventful couple weeks, um, but good to be here. If you've got a Bible, open up to Deuteronomy chapter eight. That's where we're gonna be today. Um, so yes, to put everybody's mind at ease, elephant in the room, I do know this is on my finger. Now we can just move past it and act like it's not there, okay? Deuteronomy chapter eight is where we're gonna be for today. It's our focal text. We're actually gonna read the entirety of the chapter, uh, chapter eight in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, um, as you turn there, uh, is an interesting book in that it is the last book that Moses is writing uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, it is... It is, in many cases, his farewell address, okay? This is his last words to uh, the people of God um, before they would step into the promised land. Moses is 120 years old. At this point, they have been wandering the wilderness for 40 years. And uh, just so that we're all clear, Moses is not going to get to experience the promised land like this generation of the people of God will. And, and he is writing to them his last words before they step into this promised land. Uh, he will not get to experience it. In fact, the Lord will actually lead him. Uh, he'll be able to look at it. He'll be able to see it, but he won't be able to enter it. And Moses is writing to this new generation um, of Israelites saying, um, I need you to remember some things. And Moses is passing on the, the covenant that God made and he's passing on the law to this new generation and he's reminding them of the promises of God uh, towards them, the things that God has planned for them and all of the ways that God has led them and taken care of them up to this point. And there, there seems to be this theme throughout the book of Deuteronomy that is remembrance. Moses is saying, I want you to remember some things. Of all the things that I could share with you, at the very end of my life, before you enter what we have all been longing for and waiting for, I need you to remember some things. And so there's, there's this theme. In fact, the, the book of Deuteronomy is, is famously nicknamed the book of remembrance. And Moses is passing on, is it Moses will even remind them, this new generation, about the mistakes of the previous generation, the mistakes of their fathers. In fact, what we'll find as we read is, the people of God could have and should have been able to experience the promised land 38 years earlier, but because of some of their mistakes and, 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 and them just inciting the anger of the Lord, they weren't able to enter. And the Lord says, you will not enter, but there will be a generation where I will be faithful to and they will, they will enter this promised land. And, and so Moses is reminding them, hey, like some of the issues is like, we complained a lot. We rebelled a lot. Moses is reminding them that about the rebellion against God's chosen leaders and, and the way that they, in moments of, of frustration and just uncertainty, they erected idols and worshiped other gods and just complained their entire time through. And Moses is saying, but I want you to remember the way that the Lord has led us, the way that the Lord has got us here. This is the book of remembrance. In fact, as I read my Bible, I find that, that remember is a key theme throughout all of it. I want to show you a little bit. There's a spiritual discipline of remembrance. It's a consistent theme throughout all of scripture. Isaiah 46 and verse nine says this, remember the former things of old for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Psalm 77 verse 11, Psalmist says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. 
Psalm 119, 55, I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. Ecclesiastes 12, 1, remember now your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Jesus in Luke 22 will continue to show us the importance of remembrance in our life. On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said this, Luke 22, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Revelation chapter one, verse one through three says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. And watch this, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. And blessed is, are those who keep these things which are written, who remember these things for the time is near. Moses is writing in this book of Deuteronomy, and, and in many cases, it's like a second chance for the people of Israel. This previous generation will not get to experience the promised land, but this new generation is, and, and Moses is trying to help them to understand the importance of remembrance, to say, hey, I, my desire is that you would, you would possess the land, but that you would remain there, that you don't make some of the same mistakes that the previous generation Made And he is showing this new generation that even though your fathers were faithless, your heavenly father, God, is still faithful. And that's just even an encouragement to you and I today that even though we are faithless at times, God is still faithful for his promises are in fact yes and amen. And he who is faithful to begin a work in your life is faithful to complete it. Moses is saying, hey, my desire is that you stick it out. My desire is that you actually experience that which we have longed for for so many years. Because the reality is this, friend, um, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I believe you know that. Um, but against powers and principalities and rulers in the unseen realm. And one of the battles that I personally believe that many Christians in the world that we live in today are losing more often than not is that over our mind and our memory. I don't know if you noticed this recently, but fear is the currency that our world runs on. If I can scare you, I can take your day, your, I could ruin your entire week if I can scare you enough. We live in this world that is just bent on how much can I scare you so that I have your attention, I have your focus, I have, I have everything that is in your mind. I can, I can have you if I can just captivate your attention. And it happens by by fear, and Moses is saying, hey, there's a lot of things that are coming up, but I don't want anything to steal your focus. I want you to remember. When you remember, nothing can distract you. The more I remember the Lord, the less distracted I will be by all of the deception and the other things that the enemy is doing around me. So we'll see in the book of Leviticus that the Lord will actually set up these weekly and yearly rhythms for his people that, that they might be encouraged to remember the Lord. Weekly rhythms like the Sabbath, designed to help me remember that God is ultimately in control and that even though I play a part on this earth, it's not that big of a part, and that God is still working when I'm not, that he is creator God, the Sabbath is designed to help me remember that God is above all things. Even still, all these festivals that, that the people of God would, would celebrate are there to remind them of different things that God did along the way while he led them in the wilderness. In fact, throughout much of the Old Testament, we'll see that even the people of God will, when they cross over the Jordan River, they'll, they'll establish these memorial stones to remember the Lord. Joshua 4 and the Psalms, David and, and many others will, will, will sing and write and reflect and meditate on the works of God previous. And even Jesus at the Last Supper shows us how important remembrance is by saying, when you do this, remember me tomorrow when things Go different than what you expect. Remember me. And it's clear to me that God is calling all of us as followers of him to be people marked by remembrance. We are called to be marked by remembrance. In fact, one philosopher wrote this related to remembrance. He said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Moses, with his heart bent towards these people that he's been leading for 40 years, does not desire that they would repeat the same mistakes that their fathers did. 
So it says, I need you to be clear. With the last words that I've got, I want you to remember the Lord. Why? Because remembrance of the past is key in preparing you for the promise that is to come. Deuteronomy chapter 8, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says this, Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Hear me, it's not enough to enter. It's not enough to get there. The desire is that you stay there. The desire is that you remain there. And what I love is if you're like me, uh, the temptation would have been to tell Moses, hey, um, not really happy you're not going with me, but like, what should I remember though? Because like my memory's not that good. And so what are like the four or five things? Just spark notes it for me. What must I remember? What do I really not need to worry about? And what I love is Moses right off the bat says, hey, every commandment that I've given you that the Lord gave us, you ought to be sure to follow. Every commandment. How many of you know all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness? All of it. Every word in this book is useful, beneficial, and imperative for your life and for mine. There is nothing you and I will ever face in our entire life that this book does not address, encourage, and help guide you through. Everything is in here. Everything is. And Moses says, all of it, not some of it, not the parts that you like, not the parts that are convenient, not the parts that benefit where you're at in your life right now, all of it. Remember, all of it. Why? Because the law is not designed to restrict your life, but to help protect you and guide you and lead you. Because last time I checked, I'm not actually that smart. Like, I need a lot of help. Right, like there are still times, I've lived here in Arizona for eight years, and there's still times I map quest how to get to a golf course that I've been to six times. Right, like I, I need help. Like we actually don't know our way around. As much as we think we do, we don't. We need God, we need to. And, and the Bible says, Moses says, these commandments are for you so that you may live and multiply and that you might enter and possess the land and stay there. And you shall remember the Lord your God, verse two. Remember the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness. Moses, making it abundantly clear. Um, Y'all, as good as you think you are, you didn't lead yourself one day this entire time. Like all of it was God. Every moment, every day, it was the Lord. It was the Lord who led you. It was the Lord who led us. And he led you to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. You should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord, your God, chastens you. And here's the truth. If you're not Working to remember, you are bound to forget. You and I, our natural tendency is to forget, okay? If we're not working to remember, we are bound to forget. And Moses says, hey, hey um, part of the reason we got off track is because just a couple years in, we forgot about the one who led us out of Egypt and we started building other altars. We started building other, other idols and we started complaining and thinking it was about a lot more things and, 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 and we got off track. And I need you to remember that if you don't work hard to remember the things of God and the person of God, you will forget him. In fact, a couple years ago, um, some of you in this church might have been here a handful of years, and maybe you remember uh, a handful of years ago, Audie got sick. Audie got really sick, and around this time, I started doing something different in my life, and um, I haven't always done it, but I'm, I've been working really hard to try to make it a, a practice in my life. Um, Audie got really sick and, and healthy and well, and, and, um, but it, it revealed to me that fear was a significant part of my life in ways that I didn't realize, in ways that it kind of snuck up on me. I realized it was hanging around a lot more than it should have. And in an effort to kind of take back some ground in my life and not allow fear to dominate, but also just to make sure that I'm prioritizing and remembering the Lord, a handful of years ago, I started in my phone, I'll go into my calendar app, and when I feel like God says something like so clearly, or for instance, when, when God brought Adi home from the hospital, or when Mila had a health scare and we had to take her to the hospital in an ambulance, and, and, and that we got to come home two days later, and all these things, like when these things happen, 
I, I put a reoccurring event in my phone on that day that just said, God did this. So that every year on that day, it will ping on my phone. And I'm reminded, oh, two years ago, three years ago, this day is when we came home from the hospital with Adi. Two years ago, this day is when, is when we had that scare with Camila and, and God, God protected her, God healed her, God brought her home. Why? Because if I'm not working to remember, I am bound to forget some stuff. And that might even be a great practice for some of you to start doing, just like knowing I forget stuff. I need to work even harder to make sure I remember it. And so I put it in my phone so that I make sure that this happens. But what I love in Deuteronomy chapter eight is I love just how the Bible walks us through this. Look at verse three once again. It says, so he humbled you. And watch this. He allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. So God allowed them to hunger so that he could feed them and teach them something they otherwise would have never learned. Hear me, there are some things, one of the reasons that God allows certain things in your life to happen is to create never forget moments between you and him that will become foundational in your life and memorial stones to the next generation. There are some things, now hear me, God doesn't cause everything to happen in your life. But there are some things, for instance, here, when he allowed the people of God to hunger so that he could teach them a lesson that, had, that they had to learn if they were going to be able to steward the promise that was to come. There's some things that God will allow to happen because his desire is to create some never forget moments with you. Did you know that? Did you know that God actually desires that you and him would have such amazing encounters, these moments that would mark your life forever, and they would be things that are told from generation to generation to generation in your life because of what you experience here and now. I wonder how many of us today, some of what you may be experiencing right now, God is literally orchestrating things and desiring that you would pay so much attention that you would realize this is one of those never forget moments for you and him. But how many of you know that God really doesn't get the credit that he deserves for all the things that he's doing in our life? How many of you, you are batting a thousand with like thanking the Lord and blessing the Lord at all times, remembering everything that he's ever done? Nope. Okay. You don't even have to look around. I'll help you understand. No hands. Okay. Like not even a kid in the back is raising her hand. You know, that's when you know. No, God, God's doing so much more. In fact, you've heard me say it multiple times, but that is Romans 1, that God is, that all of creation is being made more and more aware of God's invisible qualities and his attributes to the point that they have no excuse. In other words, God is working in your life on your behalf way more than you even realize. Like 100x more than you realize. God is working, but he doesn't really get the credit for all of these things that he that he does. We often pay more attention to what God isn't doing than all that he has done or is doing or has promised he will do. But what I love is Moses is helping us navigate this. Watch this Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse four. This is just absolutely insane that your Bible includes this, okay? That the Lord said like, this is how much I need to help you. Verse four, your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Can you believe, I'm just telling you, if you ask Moses, hey, what should I remember? That's not gonna be one of those things that you prioritize remembering, right? We, we love to remember parting the Red Sea. We love being led out of Egypt. We love all those things. But like, the fact that we just are like healthy, we don't really thank God for every day, do we? Moses is saying, hey, like, let me be clear. God did a lot of really amazing big things in your life. Um, but bro, your clothes are still the same ones that we had 40 years ago and they look great. Like that's how good God has been in your life. Did you even pay attention to the fact that you foot, your foot has not swelled up at, at all in 40 years? Like think about the grumbling, the complaining that's going on and then Moses is like, bro, like you, come on, you haven't even stubbed your toe in 40 years. Can we thank God for anything please? But this is how good God it. We love to remember the big things, don't we? But it's even these little things that Moses said, hey, don't make no mistake about it. God's been much more good in your life than you even, than you even remember. Uh, when I was getting married, 
Uh, years ago, I remember I, I got a lot of advice leading up to the wedding. You know what I mean? Like, hey, don't have an opinion about things. Stay out of the way. Be encouraging. Say yes. And, you know, just pray. Um, and then I got a lot of advice for after the wedding, right? Like, again, stay out of the way. Don't have an opinion. No, I'm just kidding. Um, be helpful, all those things. But I didn't really get a ton of advice on like what to do on the day, you know? So you just get to the day, and you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Um, I'm here, you know? Uh, but my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law gave me, gave me one piece of advice on the day that I've held on to and that I've tried to apply to so many different areas of my life. And it was, he said, Isaac, the photos in the video are gonna capture all the big moments. You make sure you remember as many of the little things as you possibly can. He said, because it's the little things that will allow you to recreate the memory in your mind and live it again. Remember the silverware. Remember where certain people were seated in the chairs when you were up there. Remember the song that was played at that time. Remember the colors in the reception hall. Re remember the desserts. Remember the way that, that the table charts were written in the cursive and, and all of the hard work of those little things that your wife put together. Remember those things. And I'm so grateful for, for that encouragement and that, that piece of advice. And, and I would pass that on to you today. I wonder what it would begin to look like in your life if you started Yes, all of the, God's done a lot of amazing big things in your life, and those are awesome. But what if we just got annoying with remembering and thanking God for even what seems to us like the dumbest things in the world? God has been way, way too good. Continuing on in verse six, the Bible says, therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Notice, Moses is making a connection between remembering the Lord and your ability to fear him, okay? If I'm gonna fear God, okay, awe, reverence, attention, focus, I must remember him. It's helping us understand that if I don't remember God, it's gonna be very difficult for me to fear him appropriately. And if I don't fear God appropriately, I will end up being bound by fear separately. I must remember him. And, and he's saying, if you don't remember the Lord, you will, you will find yourself not fearing him appropriately. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, reminding them of, hey, this is where we're going, of fountains and springs that flow out of valleys and hills, and a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And when you have eaten and are full, praise God, then you'll bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Understand something today. God does not nor will not forget you. But because of that reality, the enemy's desire is to get you to forget him. Why? Because if I... Because if I forget the Lord in doing so, I will begin to miss out on some of the promises of God in my life and I'll stay stuck in a wilderness that is not my home where pride will ultimately become my downfall. I will stay stuck in places and seasons I don't need to be stuck in if I forget the Lord and forget the one who's leading my life, who got me here and is gonna get me there. I'll stay stuck. The enemy would love nothing more than for you to forget the Lord today. And we would love nothing more than for you to begin to think that you got yourself here. If the enemy can convince you that you're where you're at right now because of your effort, he's winning. No, so he tries to get you to forget the Lord, forget who led you, forget who has protected you and guided you and gifted you and given you strength to get to where you are right now. Moses is writing to this new generation, this next generation of Israelites saying, hey, uh, as excited as you are about the promised land to come, that is awesome. And I want you to be excited. It's gonna be even better than you could possibly imagine. All that God has told us it would be, it's gonna be even better than that. But also, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget what God led you through. Don't forget that the only reason you're there, and the one who given it to you, the one who led you there, the one who protected you and cared for you and got you there is the Lord. Remember the Lord. Beware, verse 11, that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which I command you today. 
I love this. Moses, again, helping us understand. This is the significance of remembrance, friend. What you remember, how you remember, will ultimately dictate how you are able to obey. He's saying, if you don't remember the Lord, you will, be, you will disobey him. Okay, what? Well, beware that you don't forget by not keeping his commandments. I'll say it this way. Disobedience is the act of forgetting God. When I forget God, I am most susceptible to doing the very thing I shouldn't be doing. When I forget God in my life, it actually becomes a lot easier to fall into the temptation and the trap of the enemy that he is seeking to devour me. All those tricks that he has laid out, they're a lot easier for me to stumble into when I forget the Lord. He's saying, hey, hey, don't forget the Lord by disobeying his commandments. They're connected. Remember him. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. When your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land, sounds a lot like Arizona, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you, that he might test you, to do you good. And yeah, I love how he slides that in there. Like, by the way, all of this has been to do you good, to prepare you for the promise that is to come. Be careful that you don't forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and get the promise and then say in your heart, my power, my might. Look how quickly that happens. Look how quickly pride shows up in your life. Look how quickly pride starts to lead your life. My power, the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. Hear me, God will not share glory with you. He won't. You either give him credit or you can try to take credit, but it will not go well with you. God will not share his glory with anyone. And it is a humbling thing to remember the Lord. I'll just tell you, when you begin to remember the Lord, you'll find yourself on your knees, on your face a lot more. In fact, this is what Isaiah says in Isaiah, in Isaiah 6. He writes like in the throne room of God, he says, woe is me, falls on his face before the Lord. He says, woe is me for I am a, um, a man of unclean lips. Begins to recognize his messiness, his uncleanliness and realizes faced in that moment. I mean, when you begin to remember the Lord, you are very quickly reminded that he is God and you are not that he's been the one leading and you haven't, that he has protected you and guided you and is doing all of those things and you aren't. But it's so easy to forget the Lord, isn't it? So easy in the world that we live in, dominated by, by fear and attention and can I steal your attention? Dominated by busyness. So easy to forget the Lord at times and we wonder, how did I? It's a trick of the enemy, friend. Because God won't forget you. So he tries to get you to forget the Lord. In fact, I'll say it this way. Maybe one of the biggest dangers facing the church today is the Christian who thinks they had anything to do with the life and the blessing they're currently experiencing. Moses says, hey, I need you to understand how quickly pride shows up in your life when you don't remember the Lord. But remember him. Remember him at all times. Don't make the same mistake we did. Remember him as you go in to the thing we've longed for. Remember the Lord your God. Yeah, you played a part in your life, but the only reason you've played any part in your life is because you and I have been given chance after chance after chance after chance after chance because of the graciousness and the mercy of our God. Friend, we ought to be thankful today because we're a mess. We don't deserve the second chances that we've got, but I'm so thankful that the Lord even models the importance of remembrance and what the other side of it is forgetting some things because the Lord says, I don't remember your sin any longer. I separated as far as the East is from the West, showing us that there are some things we ought to remember, but there are most definitely some other things that we ought to forget. Some of us in this room, the reason you're having a hard time remembering the Lord is because you have stored up way too much other things that you're remembering about how much, how much of a mess you are and what your past has been. 
You, you remember that our phones don't do this anymore because your phone now has like seven terabytes of data and storage on it. Um, but like in the past when like they were like normal and it wasn't like a computer, it was just like a phone, you could take a bunch of pictures and then this little like box would show up on your phone if you, if you took too many pictures and it would say, hey, storage is full, please clear space. Some of you today, the reason you're having a hard time remembering the things of God, remembering God in your life consistently is because you have stored way too much up and it's time that you clear out some space. It's time that you actually follow the Lord and don't remember some things. You remember him and you forget some stuff that God doesn't want you to, that God doesn't even remember anymore. Some of us in this room, you're remembering things that God doesn't even remember anymore by choice, mind you by choice. We need to be thankful, but there are some things that we need to forget, and there are definitely some things that we need to remember. Moses is telling the people of God, I remember that he led us this far. Remember what he did. Remember what he said. Remember the law. Remember the covenant. And make no mistake about it, also remember you didn't get yourself here. Keep that at the forefront of your mind as you step into the promise. Because the reality is this, we often forget what we should remember and we remember what we should be forgetting. I can tell you, I can quote every single line in the movie Sandlot. But my wife will ask me to go to Costco for one thing. And in a seven minute drive from my house to Costco, I have no idea why I'm there. I can tell you what I was wearing, where I was, and what I was eating the night that Derek Jeter retired from Major League Baseball. But I'm already having to count how many kids I got to make sure that they're all there when I like get in the car. Like I have three, right? Okay, yeah, I do have three now. You ever realize this? We remember some of the dumbest things, some of the things that God's chosen to forget. And then we forget the very one who has led us this whole way. Moses writes in verse 18, he continues and he says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that, me, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as is this day. Again, helping them understand, your heavenly father is faithful even though your fathers were faithless. I need you to remember that. I need you to remember God is faithful to complete what he started in your life. Remember the faithfulness of your God. Then it shall be, if by any means you forget the Lord your God, watch this, and then follow other gods and serve them and worship them. I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Moses shows us another really important element of remembrance, and that is that what you remember who you remember will ultimately dictate who and what you worship. Your worship is connected to who, what, and how you remember your life. Look at it. Look at the verse again. He says, if you forget the Lord your God, and what happens naturally when we do that, and in turn, you follow other gods, and you begin to serve and worship them, what will happen? He says they're going to perish. Is God telling you today, if you forget him today, like that's gonna be it for you? No. But let me be clear, if, you, if we forget the Lord, there are some things that God wants to do and walk through and navigate in your life and in mine today, I'm gonna miss. There's gonna be some abundant life, never forget moments that I'm gonna miss out on today if I forget the Lord, if I forget who gave me today, if I forget who gave me breath today, who brought me here today. What and how you remember will ultimately determine who and what you worship. It's, it's not just enough to remember what, but how you remember it is important. What God did and how he did it. How I got here. Not just what happened in my life, but how I got here. How God navigated me, how God guided me, how God cared for me. Because the question isn't, does humanity worship, but rather, what does humanity worship? You are worshiping something, friend. I would venture to say 
it's probably more connected to what you remember the most than anything else. Moses says, don't fall into the same trap that we did. And start worshiping and building other idols. No, 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 remember the Lord at all times. You wanna stay on the, pa- on the path, this narrow path that leads to life? Remember the Lord. You wanna stay on track? Remember the Lord. This is, this is what the writer of Hebrews tells us. He says, hey, you wanna, you wanna keep running this race with endurance, this narrow path that leads to life? Fix your eyes on Jesus and Jesus alone. Nothing else matters. Remember him. You wanna stay focused on your purpose and the promise that God has set in front of you? Remember the Lord. You wanna know how to not get prideful? Remember the Lord. How do you remain humble in this life? You remember the Lord and you will be daily reminded you're not. You wanna live a life free from worry? Remember the Lord. You want anxiety to stop dominating your life, your mind and your day? Remember the Lord. You wanna begin to take back some ground in your life on fear? Remember the Lord. Don't forget to remember. With Moses' dying words, he tells the next generation, remember the Lord. Above all else, remember him. Friend, can I tell you, that's what we need, but that's also what these next generations need from us as well. Because there are some lessons they shouldn't have to learn on their own because we learn them and we walk through them and we remember them and we pass them on from generation to generation that they may dwell in the land of the promise in their life and experience all that God has for them. And so this we recall to mind so that we have hope. What's the key to hope? Remember the Lord. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Even though I fail, his don't. And they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Friend, God's been more good than you have time in the rest of your life to notate. but I am thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The scripture tells us one of the, one of the many benefits of the presence of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit in our life is that he helps us to remember. So with your head bowed and your eyes closed, and I just wanna encourage you to allow him to take you down memory lane for a moment. And I would ask that maybe you don't rush to the parting of the Red Sea in your life. And maybe take a moment to realize your feet aren't swollen. You got clothes on your back. I actually don't have to look that far to remember how in control, good and faithful God is in my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you today in this room with your head bowed and your eyes closed, your response today might be there are too many things that are in your mind that it makes it hard to remember what God is doing or to remember him. Excuse me, it's not, it's not just about remembering what God did, but remembering who did it. Today, maybe to, in a moment when we call our prayer team, maybe you need to come down to this altar and pray with somebody and, and allow God to bring freedom to your mind and to your heart. It's not about forgetting and acting like nothing ever happened. It's about establishing a right perspective and remembering things properly. Not what happened, but how God saved you from it. Maybe today you need to put some things in God's hands and allow him to fill your mind with some new memories or maybe reshape some memories that you have held onto too closely. For others today, maybe, maybe today's just a humbling day for you. Say, so you know what, I, I've kind of started to think that I've been doing this. Today, I'm, I'm reminded, I'm, I must remember the one who got me here. God's good, friend, and he is for you. 
Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you would recall to our mind that which you have done, you have said, you have spoken, you have protected us from. I pray that would be a continual prayer of this house every day. Pray that it would be our heart's desire to remember you at all times. Because that is in fact the key to the hope I long for and the life that I desire to live. Because if I got you, I'm gonna be all right. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your encouraging nature. Would you show us in Jesus' name, amen. I hope you were blessed by this message and I truly hope you heard the Lord speaking to you through it. Before you go, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new message is posted. And make sure to leave us a comment below sharing what God spoke to you and how he used this message in your life. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.